Good morning, folks. Boy, NASA and the UN are really making this easier on me every day. To summarize, it's not global warming. It's climate extremes of every kind. Now, man isn't exactly helping the situation, but we are not the genesis. It's all forms of weather, and while there is still warming, the CO2 curve deviated from the temperature six years ago. The loudest and most respected voices in the world are now calling for an alternative to carbon climate change causation hypotheses, like my video, Energy from Space. I find it amazing that the experts are now coming to the same conclusions even while they ignore the most important piece of the puzzle in my opinion. Gotta move on, because our earthquake watch has been sizzling. The score officially now is four significant quakes in the 29 and a half days to start 2013, but six significant quakes in the two days so far of the quake watch. USGS downgraded this from 6.7 to 6.3, either way this latest quake is significant. Small buoy deviation during this last quake, but you'll remember yesterday I showed how another Santa Cruz quake rocked a buoy, and that one has not come back down. I went back a month, still no precedent for this sea level, went back six months. I can say that since the moment of yesterday's quake, it is possible the sea floor may have fallen three or four feet, causing that one meter rise in the overall sea level. Let's hope this area isn't clearing her throat for something bigger. Another comet to introduce, don't forget asteroid DA14 is only 13 days away, PanStars approaches in a month, and Ison is coming in the fall. But C-2013A1 siding spring, which only looks close to Jupiter before you see it's actually way down south of the planetary ecliptics. The reason this comet is significant is because on October 19th, 2014, a little more than a year after Ison's visit way too close to Mars for comfort, there's a genuine chance that this comet could actually hit Mars. Now the current data suggests a miss with relative certainty, but impact is not out of the question given the margin of error. We'll have to file this one away in our memory. Solar wind speed and temperature in yellow and green both rising. Density staying about the same, maybe bouncing around a bit. It's definitely a stronger than normal stream. It's causing minor inductions and disturbance of the magnetic field ahead of the CME we're expecting tomorrow. The only ejection in the last 24 hours is a very tiny filament that destabilized and did pop a small CME that's only visible on Lasco C2. Had a low C flare this morning. It's really sad when that counts as flaring news, isn't it? Northeastern Limb has some development to watch, though. Checking in on the planets. I've shown this with the JPO orbital diagram, but let's have a look at it from the ground. Sort of. As I pull forward time to bring up the sun, I said sort of because we'll need to turn off the atmosphere to see these conjunctions, which you obviously can't do in real life. But here you see there is a gathering afoot. The moon is going to sneak in there as well at the end. These conjunctions, combined with the emergence of the dark coronal holes in late January, forced the earthquake watch. It's continuing now, but let's hope the correlated quakes feel satisfied in proving themselves and don't feel the need to rock and roll anymore. The sun is the climate driver, and they're just scraping the surface of understanding energy from space. Coronal hole stream and CME expected tomorrow, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.